Few have done more to improve eye care, prevent blindness, and restore sight worldwide than Dr. Klaus Dolman. His surgical innovations in keratoplasty and keratoprosthesis have made him internationally recognized as the father of modern corneal science. On being asked why he chose this career, Dr. Dolman credited his father as his mentor. My father was a um, professor of ear, nose, and throat diseases in Lund, Sweden. And he essentially hinted that any career outside medicine would be unthinkable, particularly academic medicine. That was clear. So I chose the path of least resistance there. And but when in I have a, an, had an interest in biochemistry, and I have a PhD in biochemistry, and my topic was the proteoglycans of the cornea and, uh, <clears throat> and their metabolism. And I worked on that for a number of years. And then <clears throat> in my clinical uh, training, I, it was logical then to continue with, with the cornea. Dr. Dolman trained in several laboratories in France and the United States, including a year and a half with Dr. Jonas Friedenwald at the Wiener Institute, Johns Hopkins University. After graduation, he returned to Boston. I started uh, the cornea service here and with that, the teaching program and the research program. I got laboratories from Dr. Skeppens and Dr. Balash up in uh, what is now called the Skeppens Eye Research Institute. At that time, the Retina Foundation, we had a large cornea laboratory up there. And uh, the clinicians, the, uh, the fellows, more than 200 of them, they came and did research with the PhDs up there, saw patients uh, down here, and uh, that was a rather winning formula. He and his clinical and laboratory collaborators have developed keratoprosthesis designs, surgical techniques, post-operative treatments, and repair procedures to a degree that has made this procedure considerably more successful than before. My uh, interest in the Boston, what is now called the Boston Keratoprosthesis, started in the mid-1960s when I saw some examples of um, less developed devices elsewhere, but they could occasionally give a spectacular result but the uh, complications were so severe and so frequent so that the demo could be uh, universally used. But I figured that uh, there must be a way to, uh, to eliminate or decrease those uh, complications one way or the other. We are still only halfway there, but the, it is now much, much safer and simpler and uh, less expensive. And this is important, particularly for the developing world, where there are so many ulcers, and uh, there are eight million people in the world, according to WHO, who are blind from corneal diseases. In the undeveloped world, as I mentioned, uh, uh, there is a large uh, incidence of corneal blindness. And uh, of course, prevention is everything, but uh, in rural communities in Africa, India, and China, and so on, uh, infections occur very quickly, readily, difficult to treat, and they come to treatment late and end up with corneal blindness. So uh, financial, economic development is everything, but we have to start somewhere. Dr. Dolman is passionate about translational research and strongly believes in the interaction of scientists and clinicians that is fostered by TIFOS. It is uh, self-explanatory or self-evident that uh, getting together uh, experts in the field is, uh, has a very fertilizing effect. And that can be uh, listening to somebody else's talk and suddenly something occurs in your mind or over a drink in the evening or whatever, but that um, type of communication for a couple of days is invaluable. Tear Film, uh, Ocular Surface Society, uh, has been a, um, a very extremely important initiative uh, by David Sullivan, and he uh, created the, the context for uh, communications of the world's uh, ocular surface investigators, who were many and innovative and, uh, and so on, but they sort of lacked the communication, lacked the, the structure for it, 
And uh, now with this society and its um, congresses have been valuable and the best indicator of the value of something like that is the large attendance. Uh, people have been flocking in from near and far. That's been one of the largest and I, I would think the largest special, very specialized uh, society uh, in all ophthalmology. And that means that it was needed. The exposure from both sides at these TIFOS conferences has led to valuable collaborations. The scientist has been living with his old research, his own techniques and, and so on. He does not necessarily know where it will fit in clinically. The clinician doesn't know about scientific methods, but he has clinical problems. And if he can outline those pre clinical problems and see if there are among the scientists, people who are suddenly take an interest and come up and say, I may have a solution. And uh, then bring in a fellow uh, to work on that. And that could be very helpful. I think uh, I've been on both sides and um, I think it is important that it is clinician generated uh, because this is what medical science is about, to, to help people. And uh, only the clinician knows where the problems are, he doesn't know the techniques. So if the clinician outlines the problems well in a stimulating, enticing and uh, interesting way, that can be tackled. Uh, by younger people. And uh, young fellows are easily impressionable. They sit there with their eyes open and, and listen. And if there's something that sounds great to them, they are, uh, probably will eagerly jump. With the knowledge that millions of people can still benefit from the impact of an artificial cornea, Dr. Dolman is not giving up anytime soon.